Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Andrew, and for this video, it's not going to be a Clip Studio Paint tutorial. What I want to talk about, or rant about, um, is a subject that, I don't know, I was, I've been kind of hesitant on, on talking about, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it. And that is the subject of tracing, or uh, some people call it uh, cheating or copying whatever you call it um, it's um, it's a tool that's been used by artists for many many years it's the reason a light box was invented um, now I think the controversy is more on the art critics side than it is on the artist side I think most artists know that tracing or uh, copying or cheating whatever you call it is a tool that's been used for a long time but uh, critics seem to have a a more um, narrower view of what quote unquote art needs to be um, so if if you didn't draw it from your own imagination then it's not you know real or you don't have talent or you're not a real artist so but I wanted to uh, say this because I actually um, when I first started using clip studio paint I was using it pretty much like pencil and paper I would draw from my own imagination and for me I can tell you that my artwork looked very stiff um, and it's funny because that's kind of some of the arguments that art critics have about artists who use um, like 3d models or the little mannequin models or photographs or whatever they often say that that looks stiff so um, for me it was the opposite when I wasn't using 3D models, my work kind of looked stiff and flat. When I started using 3D models, my artwork, um, it looked actually more, more three-dimensional. And, and I, that is because of the, the help of 3D models. Now, I don't use photographs. Um, simply because it's very difficult to find a photograph of a person or a, a scene or a situation where it's exactly how you want it. Now, some people take photographs of themselves and, and uh, use that as a reference. Uh, and that's fine. Yeah, you can do that too. Uh, you can do a lot of things. I've seen people grab multiple photographs and cut pieces out of each photograph and paste them together so it, it kind of looks like this Frankenstein uh, this Frankenstein kind of picture and then they use that as a reference so um, I have here oops I have here uh, I'm gonna show you two drawings that I've done to um, that I've used uh, to create t-shirts I I just a small plug here I have this um, Teespring's t-shirt uh, which I've created where I have these two uh, designs here I'll leave a link in the description if you uh, want to help support the channel you can get these t-shirts so I got this one it's called Big Brain and it, this is the um, design that's on the back of the shirt on the front of the shirt there's a smaller design on the left side and it's just the head but on the back you can see there's this big brain and then I have this other t-shirt here it's called two two rad right here and on the front of the shirt it's the little logo with the radium bar and so if you want to help support the channel I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy those you can get hoodies of those too the same thing um, so yeah if uh, 
if you don't mind uh, checking that out, you can help support this channel by getting one of these uh, t-shirts. Oh, and more designs are coming, so if you got any ideas or something, uh, just throw them down in the comments. But um, back to, so here's here's that design of the two red. So there's, like I said, and here's is the um, big brain. So the way I drew this one, you can see I started out with the circle and then the little chin. So it kind of looks like an egg or something. And then on a different layer, I drew this kind of a sketchy uh, body. I knew I wanted him to have a smaller body. So, but you can see that I kind of I drew um, through the objects. I think that's the term artists use is draw through it. So I knew that if his chin was here, his neck would be somewhere around here. So his back is here. Even though you're not going to see that, I drew it so you can, it draws through. And then after that, I, on a separate layer, in a separate color, just so I can differentiate this stuff, I drew the arms and the hand, uh, the, the legs and feet. And you can see it's just uh, pretty sketchy. They're just cylinders and, and uh, tubes or whatever you want to call them. And then after that, um, I started to draw the... Let me go back to the original color here. Oops, that's not right. This one. Then I, I used that information to draw this, right? After I drew that, I turned off all the sketches and then I made that into a blue line I lowered the opacity and then using this information I was able to draw a more finer uh, line line work here and so you can see that kind of uh, the hand is the finger here was a little bit too long you can see that so what I did was I created another layer and I started putting in a little bit more detail. I put the elbow. You can see the elbow here. Uh, I put the uh, the fingers and toes and toenails. So a little bit, just a little bit more detail in the stuff. So I can have just that much more information. And so that's what I used to do the final uh, line work. So you can see, you um, even though I didn't use a 3D model, what I essentially did was I drew a 3D model, right? So all this information here was the same information on a 3D model. The problem with this is that once I drew this, I couldn't rotate it or, or change the angle of the camera or any of that. I'd have to redraw that this whole thing. So with 3D models, so if you see here, this is how I started out. Oh, by the way, this, if you haven't, if you don't know, this is a homage to this 1950s uh, Harvey comic called Black Cat Mysteries, issue 50. Uh, very famous uh, before the uh, comic code authorities cracked down on, on graphic stuff like this. So it's, this is a very famous uh, horror comic cover. And so I wanted to duplicate this, but in my style. And so the way I started was with a 3D model. Now, I positioned it so it's similar to the original cover. And then I started to draw the, pretty much the, the, uh, the sketch, right? This is, this is how it starts. Uh, I just grabbed the information from the 3D model that I need. So basically, if you look at the original, if you look at the original drawing, you can see that his, um, the artist of this cover was Bob Powell. He drew the character pretty much straight up and down. Um, and it, yeah, it's, it's pretty basic. Um, so what I wanted to do was, you know, tilt tilt the, the neck and the head a little bit to the side and then also tilt his head backwards so uh, the character that I have here 
his head is tilting back and also to the side okay just to make it a little bit more dynamic and so this is the first step for me is I grab the information that I need once I have this then I no longer need the 3d model oh as you can see also I wanted to point this out I wasn't too comfortable or I'm not too sure about this but for some reason it looks like uh, the thumb on these 3d models of clip studio paint they seem a little big I don't know it might, it might just be me but so I I usually sketch them a little bit smaller as you can see here so the these 3d models are not super accurate but they give you a rough idea of where everything lays down and so after I I do the sketch you can see I drew abs and the bi uh, the pectorials the biceps and even though I'm not going to need all that and you'll see here so the next thing I did from this was I lower the opacity on this and then I put I draw the t-shirt or his uh, collared shirt in a different color again I don't stick close to I do not stick close to the um, the reference sketch you can see the the shoulder here it's a little bit bigger um, and of course I added the wrinkles on the shirt and so I'm losing all this and I didn't really need the abs or the pecs it's all covered by the shirt but I mean that's the information that I I grabbed from the 3d model that I thought it would need next thing I did was I drew a line of where the flesh was going to be uh, melting off right after I did that I I lowered the opacity on all that and I created more reference right so what I did here was I created um, using using the information of the face here I knew where the nose and this is this is the information that the 3d model provides is that I knew where the, the nose lies so that that gave me an idea of where the nose cavity of a skull would be and again uh, I, I pulled up a picture of a skull just so I can see what these shapes would look like I didn't trace a skull because again finding a picture of a skeleton that's in this angle is impossible so you kind of have to make this up as you go but at the same time you have this information here see the cheekbones here that so that told me exactly where I needed to put the cheekbones of the skull um, and then you can see here the mouth the where the two lips meet that's where I put the top teeth and I wanted his mouth open a little bit so I put a gap and then I knew where the chin was the bottom of the chin so I put the bottom of the chin there and then I just followed you can see the the 3d models chin line is a lot lower but uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to make the the jawbone that thick or that wide here maybe maybe they are that wide I don't know but I just felt it was more accurate or more I don't know it looked better if it just went straight to where the ear is so that's that's why there's a difference there again this these uh, sketches are just reference to get you in the ballpark after I finished the skull I drew the the rotting flesh or the melting flesh and I drew you know on the fingers on the hands I mean and on the face and then after that I created another one where I drew the the bony fingers and I noticed that on the original his he didn't really have a an opening on the throat it was all just melting flesh but my drawing did so I drew the neck muscles and the Adam's apple in there so and so that that's all I needed um, to go as far as that that's all the reference information that I need after that then I was able to draw the the line work the line art so you can see that um, you can see that the the eyes you know they're not 
super detailed. These are the eyes that I grabbed from the 3D model. They don't have to be super detailed. They just need to give you enough information for you to draw um, to draw the eyes. You, you sh if, if you're drawing, if you've been drawing for a while, you should know how to draw eyes. So the 3D model only provides pretty much the information of where the eyes should be. And you can see I didn't draw the eyebrows, right? Because the 3D models have them coming down, like scowling. But if you look at the, see he has them kind of raised, like he's surprised. So his, Bob Powell's uh, style here is a, a little bit more cartoonish. You know, has the, the big wide cartoon eyes because he's um, in shock or in surprise. And that's, that's fine. Um, mine's a little bit more towards the realism. But, um... So that's that's what I grab from 3D models, right? And so that's um, yeah, that's how I use 3D models to draw. Cause before this, what I was doing was, um, and, and I see this from many artists when they they ask an artist, you know, hey, uh, I don't want to take up too much space here, but. They're like, hey, draw, you know, draw an action figure, an action hero or something. And what you'll see them draw is they'll start drawing the eyes. And then they'll draw the nose. Right? The mouth. And so they'll start drawing this. And I'm, I'm telling myself is why... Why are you drawing, why are you going straight to the final, the final uh, design? I can't stress it enough that it's very important to lay down a foundation. Now, for some, some artists, they can pull it off, you know. They, they've been drawing for 20-something years, and they know where everything uh, lays. You know, they know because they've probably been drawing it for, you know, again, 20 years drawing the same pose of Spider-Man or something. You, you pretty much get used to drawing Spider-Man. Um, but yeah, and so this is what it, it turns out to, to be, you know. Even though that um, somebody might say, oh, they, yeah, that's, that's good. That's, you know, it looks good. For me, um, it looks very, very stiff. Um, and I'll show you here once I finish, once I finish drawing this. So, okay, I'll stop there. But yeah, for me, this looks very stiff. Um, and also, I don't know, a lot of times, if you look at, uh, artists or comic book artists or, or whatever, amateurs or pros or whatever it's always this pose here you know everything always lines up this way the shoulders are are exactly parallel to the hips and it's always that way um so and so for me this looks stiff even though i didn't i didn't use a 3d model that to me looks stiff and I think uh, what a lot of artists need to know is or understand is to you need to lay down a foundation first so um, it may take more time to draw uh, a foundation oh I hit save uh, but that's what you need to do and that's that's kind of one of the reasons what 3d models and um, are used for is they're a huge time saver uh, because once once I had the once I had the pose down I could have rotated the camera in any angle to see this in a different a different angle um, and that's what these 3d models help help you do uh, it's very quick uh, because I mean Instead of spending time drawing this, the basic shapes of a human anatomy or position, you can go, you know, 
straight into the drawing. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to draw because I only know how to draw in my style. You have to figure out your own style. Um, if you can, you can see from my style, I'm not, I'm not really that. Um, I'm not the guy that that draws the the hatching or. Um, you know, it's not a 90s kind of style, I want to say, if you're familiar with 90s uh, comics. Um, this is this is more more of a classics. Uh, like, a, I would say probably maybe Golden Age, Silver Age, something like that. But, so I can't, I can't really teach you how to draw because I'll only be teaching you how to draw my style. You have to draw your style. But what I want to emphasize to you is that you can use 3D models to get you to this point. This is the point you want to. So after you figure out the pose, this is the, this is, at most, this is the information you want to grab. After that, you turn off the 3D model, and then now you have to draw. Now you have to draw t-shirts, um, you have to draw the eyes, you have to draw, you have to draw everything. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what I wanted to uh, talk to you about in this video. Um, I know it was kind of a rant, probably not interested, but I don't know. If you like this kind of video, let me know. Um, and again, I just want to touch on this again. Just if you want to help uh, support the channel, I have a Teespring's t uh, storefront where it has some t shirt designs that I've made. If, uh, if you're interested in those, the link will be in the description down below. But um, yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think. Um, I hear it all the time. Um, people tell me. Uh, cheating or or tracing or uh, you know they they have their opinions uh, but in my opinion 3d models can help out a lot the problem the problem comes when this oh I had these I also wanted to show you this um, so this is this is a piece that I drew for I have a comic book and you can see here I use a 3D model. Let me put this in. The, I don't need this guy anymore. So you can see here that I used the 3D model to draw these characters. And when I first, this is when I first started using 3D models. You can see that I stuck very close to what the 3D model was. So it does look flat. It looks flat. It looks, um, I don't know. It just looks very, very amateurish. Uh, there's no line weight. There's no, uh, well, rendering. I'm still working on rendering. I still haven't mastered that. Uh, but yeah, this is this is um, how I started out. But once I started using 3D models to just grab information, not to draw the complete drawing, but just to grab information, that character is now this character. Let me, can I zoom in on this? So this is, um, how do I move this? Okay, here we go. So yeah, this is uh, the same character as this character, but, um, you know, I, I didn't use the 3D model to I didn't stick close to the 3D model. I'll say that. I only used it to reference. You know, I needed to know if she was holding a, a, a gun like this. I needed to position the model in, in this way. And yeah, and then I just started drawing the... Uh, uh, I knew where the shoulders and biceps were. So I, I drew the shoulders and biceps, but I drew them in my style. I didn't draw it. See here, the... the uh, it's very close to the 3D model, where over here, 
I, again, I only used it to kind of tell me exactly, okay, the elbow's here and this elbow would be here, right? Um, so yeah, you just use the 3D models to grab the information that you need. You don't use it to, because I, yeah, again, if you, if you stick too close to the 3D model, you'll get something like this. It's very amateurish. You can tell, um. Well, I, I guess a trained person could tell that this is a 3D model, right? So, yeah. So, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, but, again, yeah, I would love to uh, to know what you guys think about 3D models, using 3D models. And uh, if you guys would like to see me how, like to see me draw a figure using a 3D model, let me know and I'll happily do that. It'll probably be a sped up uh, video. But anyways, thanks for watching and listening to me rant. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one.